We get a lot of people that drive by and they look and they, they'll say, this is desolate. This is, there's absolutely no life out here. How can you live out here? How can you, what do you eat? I, I tell them, look at the mesquite beans, look at the mesquite trees, look at the, the weeds that you would say weeds, but we see them as spinach, you know, look at the, the saguaro fruit, the squash, the melons, the beans, those kind of things. But then you also got to think of the wildlife, like the rabbit and the deer and the wild javelinas, you know, those are our meats. You know, and I tell the people that, that you know, question, how could we live out here? There's nothing out here. We lived out here for thousands of years and we're still here. I tell them again, you know, this is our land, this is our food, this is our kitchen. In the desert, the notion of fresh is a mirage, like a ripple to an ocean, we're all in this collage. Oh, and one thing's for sure, unity is what makes the scene more pure. Detroit has this tremendous potential. Roots spread when the seeds grow from manure, so from fish there shine ola, say ola to the cure. It's been estimated that we have about 6,000 acres of land in the city of Detroit that's just sitting fallow. So we have this opportunity to use this underutilized land to grow food. Six very short years ago, we were working with 80 total garden sites across the city. That network has blossomed to include over 875 garden sites in 2009, and we're really um, anticipating about 1,300 sites in 2010. We think Detroit has the potential in the next few years to grow at least 10% of the food that we consume. It takes a village to raise a child and food to raise a village. What village has an appetite after it's burnt and pillaged? Detroit is a predominantly African-American community. The economic resources in black communities are for the most part sucked out of those communities and food is one of the ways that that happens. So we, we're very squarely looking at the issue of race as it impacts the food system. We are committed to developing a systematic and, and structured programmatic approach to addressing racism. And that includes trying to heal the perceptions, the beliefs, the attitudes. That includes uh, engaging communities in this difficult work. This food and community movement here in Detroit has really helped provide it, uh, an impetus for us to continue to get together and work together creatively thinking outside of the box and, and putting aside the, the silos that sometimes can exist within communities. Food has been the glue for, for so many facets of, of our communities and our cultures. You can sprout a seed and, and in one season have the change of food. When you have people working in gardens and farms together, they begin to share stories and share experiences and it bridges the gaps that exist between us and it, it shows us the common destiny that we have. This issue isn't just the issue of a food person or a, a local economic development, it's become a national issue. I mean, there is a commitment now from a national level, we are gonna eliminate food deserts in the next five years. That's breathtaking. FEE stands for Food Empowerment Education Sustainability Team. You find spirit in the stables and harmony when gathered around the table. Yeah, I said, you find spirit in the stables and harmony when gathered around the table. For real. And so when you have something like the FEAST program, people not only get to be involved with their community in healthy ways, but also get to learn about food, food justice, get to learn more about how to be, um, how to do good things in their communities and also be in touch with where their food comes from. The kids don't really care what people think the systems are. They, they have set out to do their own work in a way that I think is really authentic, in a way that's really beautiful. Why we don't have access to healthy food in Delridge uh, is not a simple proposition. They say you are what you eat and the options they give us are looking mighty slim while our waist getting bigger. Um, you see a lot of mini marts around in these neighborhoods and it's really hard for people to maintain healthy lifestyles that way. We had to figure out, wow, part of it is the food distribution system. Part of it is sort of a historical underinvestment issue. Part of it is an education issue. I 
work with families who are so used to not being able to speak up and who, you know, talk to me and talk to people that I work with who want change but don't know how to make that change happen. Working with young people and, and having them be the ambassadors and the leaders and the mentors of this work, there's no more powerful way to change the system. When they, got, when they participated in the grocery store audit and they went to every single store on the West Seattle Peninsula, they saw that this neighborhood had far less resources than the other neighborhoods. They saw that there wasn't a grocery store within two miles of where they came every day, and, and they found that to be really unfair. This whole Healthy Corner store is about putting food in the store, but it's also about engaging the community in the process. I think that over time, we realized and accepted the complexity of the problem, and we just started moving towards solutions. I think the cultural connection, the fact that it connects back to a culture and a history that goes way beyond just food or just built environment, those are places where there's really a salient connection that, that people are able to make. Where we were a year and a half ago to where we are today is, is enormous. One of the big things that we did see as part of moving from uh, the planning phase to to where we are today is the youth voice. And the youth recognize that their voice is powerful and that they can make change today. Good Dodge Babakiri High School. And we're here to tell you that it's a special day. We have an exciting lunch for you guys today. Today we have the brown tepary bean quesadilla for lunch. And we also have a white tepary bean stew with chicken and green chili. These uh, traditional foods are an exciting way to bring traditional foods into your school, into your daily meal, and we hope that it will be good for all of you, not just for your bodies, but for your mind, to help you with your education. Today was really a very important day for us because, you know, for the first time after 14 years of really working to promote the traditional foods, we saw the kids in the schools being served school lunches that were healthy, that were culturally appropriate, that were the autumn foods that really have, have helped sustain this community for countless generations. And to see the kids choosing between pepperoni pizza and the autumn um, tepary beans and all of those things, and I'd say two-thirds of the kids were choosing the healthy traditional choice. Today was really important. Yeah, this is really good. from like thousands and thousands of years people have been eating this. More than half of this community is under 25. And you begin to see this real shift in the, the way that young people are thinking about themselves, they're thinking about their community, they're thinking about their place in the world, they're thinking about food, they're thinking about wellness. Um, they're really taking leadership. My grandpa and his dad actually had like a bunch of fields. And those are traditional auction fields. What they would do is they'd catch the rainwater from the washes and that would go into their fields and they were all connected. This is my garden. My grandpa and his father were traditional farmers and they were the leaders for a lot of the ceremonies and there's ceremonies for like pollination, there's ceremonies for corn and for rain and for everything to do with food. Because I keep saying ceremonies because those are like the most important things to us because we're Native American and because we're autumn. My goal, like my personal goal after high school and after college is to farm my grandpa's land. Our communities have to work together because Akchin or flood farming is something that takes the whole community. You can't do it with one family or one person. And that's why I really like Toka is that's what they're doing. Like they're bringing back food. So what they're really doing is they're bringing back culture. Everybody says that the youth are the leaders of tomorrow but we're really the leaders of today. So as dry as this looks now, what's it gonna be like this summer? It's gonna be green, I hope so. <laughs> if the water comes, yeah, it'll be really green. Culture, Mr. Energy, a love in your food that brings life to community. So think what you lose when it's processed. Drive through fast life. I'm off it, gotta get fit bodies and minds and not a profit. This is life. Yeah, so this is life. Uh, this is our life.